I went to the gas station in a hurry, and the guy approached me, and he was drunk and high. He was like, "Hey man, little Lil, Lil, I'm glad I seen you, man. Hey man, let me ask you something. Let me, I'm, I need your help, man. I need to borrow some money." And I told him, I said, "Hey man, I'm in a hurry. I don't have time for that." He said, "I bet if I get this gun out the car, you'll give me some money." In my day, at 19, 20 years old, you had to deal with that issue. Then I had to realize and think about it. I can't do that no more. I, kept, I got to think about things before I do it because he had another guy in the car with the gun and he also told this guy, hey man, give me that gun out the car because I bet if I get this gun, I bet you'll give me some money. I was at the point where I realized I need to do something to this guy, but I said, I tell you what, when you get sober, come to the barbershop so I can talk to you. We're back here today with uh, the ASAP program. I am Thomas Zimmerman, a.k.a. Poo from Poo's Barbershop, and I'm here with a local friend that is also a barber that is a, a really good icon for this community, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. My name is David Alman again, of DNR Barbershop. And we came back on here today because we are trying to get the barbers to get involved, but also we're going to start off with a story, first of all, that happened to me this Saturday. Uh, I went to the gas station in a hurry, trying to get to a blues concert, and a guy that I, that that's that's a commus, a customer, and uh, older guy too, wasn't even a younger guy, approached me, and he was drunk and high. He was like, "Hey man, little Lil, Lil, I'm glad I seen you, man. Hey man, let me ask you something. Let me, I'm, I need your help, man. I need to borrow some money." And I told him, I said, "Hey man, I'm in a hurry. I don't have time for that." And he 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 said. Hey, if, I bet if I get this gun out the car, you'll give me some money. So I'm looking, and I'm thinking, like, when I was young, in my day, at 19, 20 years old, you had to deal with that issue. You had to do something to this guy because you don't know. He drunk and high. You don't know if he's going to go to this car and get a gun. Then I had to realize and think about it. I can't do that no more. I, kept, I got to think about things before I do it because he had another guy in the car with the gun, and he also told this guy, hey, man, give me that gun out the car because I bet if I get this gun, I bet you'll give me some money. So I had to think about it and realize I wanted to knock him out. I was so mad and so angry. I wanted to knock him out because that's what I would have done at 19. I thought I was bad. I thought the only issue of solving the problem is, man to man, we're going we gonna to settle this now before you get this gun. I didn't have a gun. I don't carry a gun. But at the same time, I was at the point where I realized I need to do something to this guy, but I said, I tell you what, I told him, I said, when you, come, when you get sober, come to the barbershop so I can talk to you, because right now you're not in your right mind. I'm just going, I'm, I left. I drove off. He's standing there looking at me crazy because he want to do something, but the way I talked to him is I put him in the mind. I said, man, that nigga weak. I ain't studying him, and he went on in the store. And, and Pooh, first, I want to thank you for how you think now that you ain't that 19 year old right. man and you make better decisions right. in life but that's our purpose to get the youngsters to think different right. it's it's good to walk away it ain't about being no coward right. you ain't got to pick up that gun but i want to thank you for being a better person and, and walk away even if you see the guy if you don't right. you know it's no big thing but our purpose too with that we again calling out all you barbers yes. all of you if you want to help come out and help right like we sitting around playing and listen to all the stories told in the shop but we got to get this message outside the shop i know us barbers we're not squeaky clean we done done stuff at a young age that might not it didn't kill us because of the to the lifestyle and the way the economy was going back then and and we was able to get this or not be able to get this but just because you have a you've been in some trouble these are the people that we need we de this is why they asking the barbers because er everybody's not squeaky clean we need these type stories in order to show these young kids how you made it over how you was delivered from being that person and you've changed your life now. You have a family. You've grown. You about to on the stage of retiring because most of the barbers my age now, and the younger barbers are wanting to be like us. So I'm telling the barbers this is a challenge to the barbers. We want you because if you had some issues with the police or whatever it may be, these are the type of stories that they need to see. The kids need to see how you have been delivered. See, me personally, it's hard for me to tell a kid 
how I've been delivered. Because, you know, I try to keep myself squeaky clean, but like I said, it's hard to do right. I've had evil thoughts. I've had thoughts that I wanted to kill this person, to kill this person, but I knew it wasn't the right thing to do. I ain't willing to give these folks my freedom. And right to this day, I'm going to let y'all know, I'm still imperfect. I make mistakes. I have flaws. And I have done some. Both of my brothers been to prison for drugs. I have sold drugs. I have changed so everybody can change. That's the message that we want to deliver to the youngster. So we can tell you, don't do what David did. You do different. You do it. You do, and I'm going to help you do what you do in the right manner. Right, and that's the whole situation. And I feel like this is why the barbers are really not getting involved because they saying to themselves, how can I tell a kid what to do? I've been in trouble. But you also have been delivered from the fact that you did what you did when you was a young age because our mindset was different, and now that we're older and our mindset is, is, is much more mature, this is why we need you. This is why we're asking the barbers to come help us. You know, because I don't know everything, but it's a lot of intelligent barbers in, in just in Aniston alone. I know a lot of intelligent barbers, and I'd be like, man, this dude's smarter than the average bear. He know this community. I'm in the blind because I always have tried to stay away from these things. I don't know, but it's a lot of barbers that do know. We all teachers in our right. We all teachers. And I don't know when the next meeting is, but we're going to try to get that out to every barber. Please, please, please show up. I mean, you ain't got to say nothing. Just come. Just see what we talking about. If you don't want to say nothing, and if you feel like I, I talk to the kids and all that stuff, well, come and let us know what you're doing because it may help my barbershop. You know what I'm saying? You might be doing something I ain't doing. And if you can help me, you best believe I'm going to try because I got barbers in here. They ain't perfect, but guess what? Those jokers do care about these kids. You ought to hear how they talk. And my barbers keep it real. They rough. They'll tell them in a minute, you ain't going to be shit until you get yourself together. They, they, my barbers tell them that, and, and I ain't got the nerve to do it. And they should, yeah. and they should keep it 100 with them. Yeah. And I ain't got the nerve to do that. So that's why we asking all barbers, because we are all different, but we're the same. Even though we different, we still the same, and we need y'all. And like you say, don't be scared. If you still got stuff going on, that's your personal problem. But let's teach the youth to do different. Right, because we do know one thing. You're too old to go to jail. We know you ain't doing that. So, hey, come on in here and help us, man. We need y'all help, bro, for real. I'm, you know, I'll be trying to talk, and my head be everywhere because I'm in the church. I'm in the hood. I'm in the blues club. I'm so messed up right now, man. And, and I be saying, how can I make a difference? I be talking to my own barbers. We be feuding about this stuff. I mean, we'll get upset. We'll disagree to agree. And then we'll apologize to each other and be like, well, you was right about this. But I'm going to tell you something, Pooh. You a little square, bro. You don't know for real. And I be like, well, what's that? well tell me then. I think that go on with all shops because me and my coworkers, we all, we'll call it arguing. Yeah. I call it get my point across. Yeah. And I call it disagreeing to agree. End of the day, like you say, it's all love. You know, when we when we leave that day, it's all love. And just imagine with these football teams, if we could teach them, okay, I wanna I wanna outdo you today, but at the same time, we still boys, but you gonna have to bring it. It's that's what it's all about. It's about uh, love, competition, and uniting so that we can all get on the same level. Because there's a lot of kids out there are competing to get to the next level. They want that NIL deal. But to get an NIL deal, that means you got to have your image right. So, And to um, get a, a, a NIL deal, you got to stay in school. Yeah. You got to do that lesson. Do uh, that. Uh, you won't get no, no deal. Forget a deal. Right. So not, focus on, I'm sorry, Pooh, focus on the main thing. Right. Them grades, behavior, uh, 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 conduct. In the NIL deal, to follow your lap. Right. And I also had some barbers tell me, well, if they get an NIL deal, how the coach going to coach them in college? I tell them all the time, easy. You don't get no NIL deal if you ain't in school doing your work. And you ain't, you ain't being coachable. Because the coach, you got an NIL deal. Men not an NIL deal. And the coach say, well, I'm going to bench him. Like that dude from Colorado, Dion had that time, was supposed to be this five-star. He benched him because he didn't want to follow the program and follow the direction and have no discipline. 
So he wanted to do things on his own because he a million dollar man. He think he the man. Dion put him off the team, and guess where he at now? I don't know. I ain't seen him in a long time. And, and before we get away from up here, I do want to thank y'all for letting it, me and Pooh get up here and freelance with some, I hope, good knowledge for you people. And like I say, stay tuned, and we will be back. <laughs>